But yeah, we're gonna get, get cracking with the chat. Um, so welcome to Playing by Play podcast. Tell us your journey in football from from a young age, growing up. Um, your first, let's say, 14, 16 years. Like, how when did it start? When did you start playing football? How did it yeah. kick, how did it kickstart? And um, what brought about the love of the game? Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So for me, I feel like I was kicking footies and since I came out the womb. Um my dad, <laughs> as soon as as soon as mum was born, man had a football for me, a, a Liverpool kit ready. Um so I've been playing football for as long as I can remember. I think as soon as I could, I was old enough to start actually playing. Um my dad must have put me in a team straight away. Um I played up a couple of years from about from about say five five five, six years old. Um, I was playing for like sort of older teams in the local area in Liverpool. Um, I was playing for Nedley, uh, the Legion teams like that, um, which was sort of my dad's local where he grew up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was yeah. playing summer leagues, playing whatever every every week, and um, then that just carried on. Then that was just the, the norm for me to play every week, um, going and. And playing, and my, my dad ended up being a manager of our team as a kid on Sunday league, Saturday league. Um, up until I'd say about 13 years old, 14 years old, um, I was just playing Sunday league and, and, and really just then playing for the fun of it, enjoying it, loving it. Um, you know, really going and winning all types of trophies and tournaments and etc. Yeah. Um, obviously, then it got to a certain age and. I always knew I wanted to be a, a footballer up until that that age. Um, and then I knew, like, okay, I need to look, stop pushing for academies. Um, at the time, when I got to about 13, I know that the penny dropped a little bit for me. I knew I was um, a lot better than the other lads that I was playing with at the time. Um, and I think I was ready for that next step. I went to trial at different clubs. I went to Everton, Liverpool, uh, Bolton. Um, I had scouts from Man United who hollered me. I had a couple at the time. Um, Blackburn was another one. Preston was another. Um, so it was sort of a case of going to these trials and hoping for the best. Luckily, I went. I didn't. I went to a couple. I went to Liverpool at first. Didn't work out. Bolton didn't work out, and then I went to Everton. And luckily, you know that Everton side of things really clicked for me i felt comfortable there the lads there were sound i was playing well um and and i know that throughout the trial they had me on a six week trial um and then there was like we had a couple of games we played man city in one of them and it was crazy um against these giants that i've never seen before um we played west brom and in them games i did okay but for me um for them they probably looked at me like i don't know if he's worth put taking the 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 bet on and, and giving them a contract. Um, and then the final game came down to Preston. We played Preston North End at Finch Farm. Um, and that was like the make or break. If I did well, they were going to sign me. If I didn't, they wasn't going to sign me. And that's what they told me. Um, so I went out there on a cold December night, it was. Um, this was about, this was 12. So this was about under 12s, yeah. Um, and yeah. Went out and scored a hat-trick against Preston. They signed me that same night. Um, <laughs> a hat-trick within like the first hour. Brought me off 70 minutes in and then signed me in the uh, straight after. So they didn't, I didn't even get to get changed. I was still in my kit and they just went off and signed me. So straight from there then, as you know, I was at Everton from 12 till 16. Um, we moved school um, to, you know, go and train full-time. With Everton, because we we were getting to that age where you had to really start putting in the hours to to develop, um, and yeah, I had a really good time there at Everton. Um, you know, I met a lot of good friends. I learnt a lot. I developed a lot. My football brain, myself as a person, um, everything really. Um, that was like a good four years of development for me, um, football wise and off the pitch. Um, and then I went from there, didn't get my scholarship at 16, um, to Nottingham Forest, um, where I went from the 
uh, about May um, to Nottingham. I was doing trials and stuff there beforehand. After I found out that I went going to um, Everton, so I went to, to Nottingham. I got kind of I got signed up. I, I was there. I wasn't really enjoying my football as much. I sort of fell out of love with it a little bit. Um, and yeah, in the end, I ended up just sort of walking away in my first year. Um, my first year of the two years scholarship um, at Nottingham and, and came and went and got my education instead. So, Rio, I have a question to you. Good to see yes, you. Uh, yeah, good to see you also. <laughs> tell, me, tell me, did you have any pressure from, from your dad? Like you said, you started yeah. playing at a very early age. You had this, uh, like, like the dad had the love for the game. He was a coach of your team. So did you have any pressure? Yeah, 100%. I think the pressure was definitely there. I think everyone could probably see it too, especially in them younger years when I was playing. He was the manager of my team, you know. I'd be having them long drives home if I didn't play well. Where you talking to me and the passengers, you know what I mean? Um, I go to he take me to be fair. My dad, he put a lot of pressure on, but he was very supportive as well when it comes to football. Like there'd be times where I'd have to go and on trial at Bolton, and then he'd finish his shift from nine to five, and then go and take me straight from his shift to go and play in Bolton and wherever. So he'd, he'd always support me, but the pressure was 100% there. Um, I think my dad, he just loves the game. He loves football. Um, he is obsessed with it. You, you could chat to my dad for five minutes and that five minutes will turn into a football chat. <laughs> um, so he he absolutely loved it. So the pressure was definitely there. And it, I think it was good um, for me because it always made me play better, if I'm going to be honest. Like having him there watching, I know that I've got to run a little, that little bit harder, that little bit faster and be a little bit stronger. And I know if I'm not doing as much, I can look to the side. I know if he's crossing his arms like this, I know that I'm not doing enough. So I've got to step it up a little bit. Um, but then I think for me, it gets to a certain age where I got to a certain age where that wasn't enough for me to carry on playing and pushing myself, um, especially when it got to Nottingham. And I, I was there by myself, to be fair. He couldn't be with me there every single game when I'm in Nottingham and, and stuff like that so throughout the weeks and, and in the day and throughout the summer and stuff like that so I think it got to a point where me myself I didn't want it enough at the time and I think my head was in other places that the pressure was definitely there and I know that you know when I, when I made that decision to leave there was a bit of a you know a disagreement there between me and him um so the pressure was definitely there and he always wanted me to play. And I think he still wants me to play now. Um, but yeah, it I think it was good and bad at the same time. There was the time where that pressure would help me and, and really push me and, and you know give me that motivation to push a little bit harder. I also think that the pressure can sometimes be too much to a point where it's like you know, explode mm. your head and do you know what I mean. This episode is sponsored by Craft Magic Gallery. What's Craft Magic Gallery? It's the merchandise of Bergman Art. What was the difference between the Everton Academy and uh, Nottingham Forest Academy? What was your transition like? What would you, if you could pinpoint like certain things where you think like, that's a bit different, or I need, yeah. to, I need to have a different approach? Very different, very different approaches. Um, so for me, obviously, from a personal point of view, anyway, Everton was a lot closer to home on Liverpool lab so it was very local I knew some of the lads because I had a support base there from the start it was all it was a lot easier for me to transition into that from my Sunday league team and go and, and play and whatever on the football side of things the Everton was very much football focused it was very much the quality behind stuff it was the how good you was on the ball, you know, football understanding. It was very football, 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 um, in a case of quality and, and knowledge and being able to play and technique and stuff like that. On the flip side, when I went to Nottingham, obviously it was through the summer, so it was a pre-season anyway, when I first started there. And it was just pure fitness-based. It was fitness, 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 fitness. It was going in for 8 a.m running for two hours straight going having your lunch coming back in the afternoon and 
then you're doing weight training and more running in and that was just every day it was running every single day and you know the preseason in Everton although it was hard and it was definitely challenging and it got you fitter it was very football focused through their fitness whereas mm. Nottingham was literally here is a one cone here's another cone and you're going to run for an hour straight have a little break and then you're going again and for me as you know, anyway, I hate running when it comes to, like, I hate cardio, I hate that. So at the time, like, I'm, obviously at the time, I'm a very fast, speedy, lad striker, um, and that was my main asset. So for me, running wasn't the issue when it was from A to B, but when it's A to B to A to B to A to B, yeah. that's when I'm like, oh, my God, like, this was next level for me. Um, and I, just something that I wasn't used to. And it was like, if we ever saw the footballs, it was like, oh, finally. And then I could show what I could do. But there'd be times where I'd be doing a running and I'd be coming last in the runner. And I'm a very competitive individual, as you know, as you know, too, Patrick. So <laughs> when, it, when I was coming in last, you know, I was like, I feel rubbish. You know what I mean? I, I don't feel like me. And my head was getting down. I was alone anyway. I was homesick. I wasn't really enjoying it. I didn't know any of the lads. Um, so it was very difficult for me to adjust and make that adjustment um, mm. mentally and physically. I'd be getting home and my body would be aching. And then I'm up at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. the next day, ready to walk to the training ground to go again. Do you know what I mean? So that continuous thing with no end, it was just, mm. it was hard for me. Do you feel like they didn't manage you properly and took and take that consideration? I think it's hard because I think that there's only so much that they could have done for me at that time. Because I mean, what you've got to think of, there's so many lads that have come in. I wasn't the only new lad there at the time. Um so lads have come in and you know, I think it's hard for them. It would have been hard for them at the time to really pinpoint that I was struggling mm. mentally. From mentally, I think they knew physically because they could see me coming last in the running, for example. But then, from a, they don't know mentally, or they didn't recognize mentally that there was a. I was going home and back to the digs, and I'd be crying because of how much it's hit me. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I think for me. They could have obviously. I feel like someone can always do more, but I think it would have been hard for them to specifically see that without me being. Because I'd be going to train, I'd be putting a smile on my face. I'd be well, as much as I was hating the running, I was. I, I hated it. I'd still be like want to show and impress and and show that I'm the new lad who who is motivated, who has got something mm -hmm. to. He didn't make a mistake by giving me a contract because I'm coming last in the in the in the running. I wanted to still show that I was, you know, uh, a winner and someone who could make a difference. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So Anna, how was it? Anna. How was it to? Okay, yeah. How was it to then drop to semi-professional environment when you train twice a week? So like you train every day, you train very hard, and then you drop to to training twice yeah. a week. How, yeah. how was it? Well, from the training perspective it was very different so when i went to semi-pro um i obviously left nottingham went to college um and then sort of played semi-pro as well so for me it was like the the training was a lot less and i could feel myself getting more and more unfit um i think it was a lot different like the whole idea of the culture between the two anyway is so different between semi-pro football and you know academy football or whatever you want to call it is a lot different um the attitude the mentality on the semi-pro side of things you were literally going to college turning up having a game of footy and then you know going home game on a saturday two days a week if that some some teams only did one sometimes so it was definitely hard for me physically but i know that for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to make sure that I don't just play for a semi-pro team. I also play for my college team. So, whereas the 
I don't know, the semi-pro team might train on a Tuesday and a Thursday. I'm going to play for the college, which is a Monday and a game on a Wednesday or something like that. So I've, I just always kept myself active anyway, um, just because I knew I needed to if I wanted to, wanted to keep competing. But I had a lot more time on my hands um, to do other things. I started going to the gym more. Um, I started enjoying life a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I think it was definitely a, a transition, but you could definitely see a, a change in cultures between the two, 100%. I'll elaborate more on that. On I already club. know, but for the audiences, yeah, let them know. Yeah, um, I think the cultures definitely... Okay, so, of course, football, we've all heard football is a, a game of opinions, for example which I definitely agree with it is when it comes to semi-pro football I think it's not just the opinion side of things it's also a case of who you know how well you know them who's in that circle and then if you can meet that circle and meet that certain mentality that culture that way of living and the way of being um I think that you're, you're in. You're more likely to, to be in, make more connections, and then if it doesn't work out for you here, well, if one of them lads have gone to another team, well, you're in there as well. Do you know what I mean? So it's very yeah, yeah, yeah. easy to to break into that if you can break into that circle. I think for me it was a case of I just wanted to play football, and I was a 16, 17, 17 18, 19 year old lad who. A lot of the things that they were, these grown men were talking about and going on about, I didn't really care. Um, whether it was what they did on the weekend, their social, their work, whatever it was that, that joined them together. I'm a young black lad from Liverpool going to, you know, these very white, middle, not say middle aged, 30 year old, late 20s lads who are, you know, going and going to pub after training or a match or something like that. And for me, I'm like, I'm going home and going to rest because I've got another game tomorrow or another training session tomorrow. Whereas these men were like, it's it's, it's the social side of it as well. And I think yeah. for me, if you don't have this, if you're good at football and you, you think you're good enough or you're around about, you know, the same level as what they are or better, just above, but you haven't got that social side to it and that sort of chattiness and that that I don't know what the word is adaptability. So yeah to, mm. to, to fit into that circle you're not gonna you're not gonna play and I think that was hard for me at that time because like I say I'm 16, 17, 18, I'm I'm different age, I'm a different type of lad in a way. Um so I'm not getting into them circles. So I wasn't playing as much. So my games on a Saturday I'm because they see me as a young fast lad they'll throw me mm -hmm. on the last and throw me on the yeah. wing where it's like I'm actually trying to play and like I've still got goals of working my way up and I know I'm good enough so give me that the chance because I'll run that a little bit harder I will work a little bit harder um I'm looking after myself physically um I'm fitter I'm training twice as much three times as much as these men who were just hitting up on a Tuesday and a Thursday throw me in the team, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I played at a high level um, literally recently, so can you not just, you know, look at the football side of it, but as you know, um, the game isn't just about what you know, it's who you know at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, I've met some brilliant people in semi-pro footy who I'm still sound with and I'll still chat to, uh, managers and, and players, um, but at the same time, I know that, for example, I've not been playing for the last season and a half, two seasons. If I was to phone up a team now, I think I think that I'd struggle because of the connection side of it. But when you think about it in comparison to when I was first on, I've got so many more connections that I could phone someone up and say, give me a chance and at least I'd get on the bench instead of not even turning up. I remember turning up to a semi-pro team and they're a very good semi-pro team now. They've they've been promoted and, and whatever. And I remember turning up at 17 years old. Um 
and we have this little training game on the Astro. I've been going back and forth. They haven't really put me in a team at all because I'm a young lad. They don't trust me. No experience. Um, and I remember turning up and on this training game, we was just like a little match and they had me up against this centre half. They had like a, a starting team and like a, a, a subs team and I was on the subs team, of course, at the time and I was up against one of their main centre halves and he was like the manager's mate and um, I've gone up against them. I've bagged in this game. It must have been like a half an hour game. I've bagged four goals. I've, I've terrorised them. I'm pinning, I'm spinning, you know, and as much as they say, you know, you're young, you haven't got the physicality. I was bullying these men, like, strong, um, bagged four goals. I was running in behind. I was holding it up. I was linking play. I was doing everything. Um, so that, for me, was like, okay, I've done, I've shown them that I can contest with these men. I've shown them that, you know, I'm more than, you know, just getting a little five minutes on the on the bench off the bench at the end of the game or whatever. I've shown them that you know they can trust me. It got to a game, a league game. We was going up against the, one of the top six at the time. Can't even remember who it was. Um, and they wanted you to travel to the game, and then they tell you the team. I got there, and they told me I wasn't even on the bench after that week of training, and it's like. If I've trained like this and I still can't make the bench, then something is wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know I've, I'm the best man in training that night. I know I was. Well, the two that week, that week, I was the best the best in training. So for me to not even get a sniff on the bench and just sit on the bench and get a last mm -hmm. 20 minutes, they just wanted me to come and do the warm up and, and watch from the sides. And it's like, no, come on. I'm, I'm not only am I a 17 year old lad who doesn't drive, who has to get a lift with someone, a family member to take me there for you to now tell me that I'm not going to stop. But I know I've proved myself and I've done enough to at least get myself on the bench here because they had lads that were on the bench who were his mates, you know, lads who he played with previously, the manager who played with, you know, other lads who were coming back from injury who hadn't played in months. Like, there was just a bunch of lads and I'm there, like, ready to go and show them what I'm about. So, yeah, it was a... Uh, there's definitely a, a transition into semi-pro. It's a lot different. And I think if you want to play and you've gone from that academy football to semi-pro, you really need to adjust to their way because you need to keep, you need to find a way to keep your standards high, but also adjust to if you're not being that sociable guy who can chat to them and have a little bit of banter with them and maybe, you know, go after a, after the after a match and go and socialize with them in some way find a way to, to be there you're going to really struggle at semi pro to actually get into a team and, and be successful but once you're in you're in so you you think that it was the reason you retired early this uh, big ops uh, spikes up uh, up and down uh, in football yeah I've definitely i think i've definitely um had ups and downs that have resulted in it. I think for me, because like when when I obviously when I spoke before and I said about my turn from Everton to Nottingham and like it sort of my my mentality wasn't right at the time. There was a build up to that. Like for me, when I was at Everton, as every lad's going to say, but I know it's true. I should have got my scholarship at the time. And if you ask any of the lads that were there at the time, same time as me, they just said the same thing. So I personally think I, I deserve a scholarship. So for me, that's the first mental blow that I've had to endure um, at that time. Then I've gone, and at the time I had, going into a little bit more detail between that Everton and Nottingham stage, um, I went, I had an agent at the time, and he was getting me trials from everywhere. He got me trials at... Birmingham, Blackburn, um, Preston already got in touch saying that they'd just give me this, a scholarship straight from the off. Um, I went to Blackburn on trial in the first week after I got released and I got offered a scholarship there straight away. Um, I had trials at Birmingham. I had trials at Southampton. They flew me down and I went and had um, a week there. 
of training with the lads and on trial and at, at a game as well. And um, so I, I got I went to a lot of different sorts of teams in that transition. For me, um, I I knew that as soon as I left Everton and I went to Blackburn, I knew that I wanted to go there. Um, and at the time I went to training, I was still sharp. So I was going, I was tearing it up. I was showing the levels that I had in comparison. I, I, I was showing that, you know, I, I'm good enough to be the main man here. Um, and they, they offered me that contract within the first week. But the agent that I had at the time, you know, he voiced to me and was like, you know, and it probably does work on his side of things, you know, in, in, in other situations. But he said to me, hold off on signing this contract right now. You know, um, go to these other clubs, go to Nottingham, who offered me a trial, go to Southampton and, you know, try and get offered something there. Come, We'll come back to Blackburn and they might just offer us a little bit more and say, you know, um, you know, we, we love you so much and we don't want to lose you is a, a pro contract. That's what he was trying to do. He was trying to play off the two, if that makes sense. Um, so I was like, you know, being the 16-year-old lad that I was at the time, I was like, okay, cool. Trusting my agent. Um, we went, done the trials, and I just said to him, after like a couple of weeks, I was like, look, I'll be honest with you, I don't really want to sign anywhere else. I know, I know the lads at Blackburn. I know some of the coaches at Blackburn. I enjoy it there. It's not too far from home. The, their football focus, um, the setups, brilliance, like everything about it was like sign for Blackburn, sign for Blackburn, sign for Blackburn. So I just said to them, look, I don't care about this. I'll, I'm happy, more than happy to work for the next contract after a scholarship and, you know, just like everybody else, because that's what I've been doing anyway. Um, and I said, just, you know, go back to them and tell them I'm, I'm willing to sign. And he did that. And by the time that we got back to them, after going on these trials, they basically came out and was like, you know, look, you've gone. We, we've had to, we thought that you were gone. We went and signed another striker, which is, you know, that's football, that's life. For me, it was heartbreaking. So that was like another mental blow for me where I'm like, um, wow, like, this is a brutal world. This football is brutal at the end of the day. Um, so then, that, then it was a case of, okay, Nottingham have offered me a scholarship. Preston already was there. Who do you want to go with? And in my mind, I wanted Preston because it was closer to home. And I, again, and I was more familiar with the club and, and whatever. But then my agent really pushed me to to go to Nottingham because of the setup. Because of they had the twenty ones. I don't think Preston had the twenty ones at the time. And there was like more development there. And it was a CE. He, he was trying to push it and describe it as a, a better, stronger academy. So. I went there and then that's where that sort of built up for me, the homesickness and everything else mentally. So I think from that side, there was a lot of um, blows for me mentally. And then the semi-pro thing, it was like, this is so different. This is a completely different ball game. And I've got to start from scratch again. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, it was a, a mixture of the two of A, having to play semi-pro and B, the whole sorts of ups and downs which I've had in football anyway um, was definitely a, a, a tough one for me so which caused me to you know stop playing now along with I know that there's other things out there do you know what I mean it took a lot of development for me to be able to say that I don't want to play anymore it took a lot for me to, to, to go through and to actually come out on the other side for me to say you know what I'm going to try something else I know I know I know I'm sorry for breaking the podcast just one announcement okay Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. Do you have any regrets? Would you have done anything different? Um, I think in terms of leaving Nottingham at the time, no, I wouldn't. And I've, I've definitely been asked this so many times and had to think about it so many times. I wouldn't because I know in myself that for one, A, I didn't want it enough. For two... I know that mentally I wasn't right. And I think if I stayed there, I don't know where I'd be, how I'd have ended up. I don't know what would have happened. Um, and it was a decision that I wanted more. Than, at that time, I wanted nothing more than to leave, get that train home and come home. That's what I wanted. So I can't mm. say that I regret that. 
one thing that I probably would regret looking back at it now was um, given so much trust to um, you know my agents at the time. I'm not saying that it was his fault because at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a man and I make my own decisions. But I wish that I made my own decisions um, and really just said, look, I want to play for Blackburn. There's no reason for me to not want to go to Blackburn. I really want to go there, sign it. And I think that would have been my only one. But at the same time, like I say, I'm a man and I'll, I'll own my decision in how I've went about it. I've done enough mentally to overcome um, that mental struggle that I had um, throughout this whole process and just be able to own it. I think that's a big one. And for me, if I was to say, oh, I regret this, I regret that, I'd never, ever be able to live on and get over it and, you know, mm-hmm. move on. So, yeah, I can't, I can't say so, no. Okay, so we have uh, seven minutes left. Uh, let me just squeeze uh, two questions in one. Uh, talk to us about your business and about your plans for the future. Yeah, um, Trident Flavors is my business. That is a food business that I've started. <laughs> that I started. <laughs> yeah, um, sort of. I went to University of Liverpool, obviously, and got my degree there. Whilst I was working there on placement, it was sort of with startup businesses and stuff, and it got me to thinking, you know, what other passions do I have? So it's a food business specializing in Bayesian food. My family come from Barbados and my nan taught me how to cook. So I got the flavors right there. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, that is a big one for us. We bought a food trailer. We're looking to do events and, and festivals and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, we're looking to to really progress on that. That is a big goal of mine um, going forward. Um and then on the flip side of that, you know, I'm working at the minute full time. I've been saving up for a house. I'm looking to put myself around um, very like-minded individuals and good role models who can push me in the right direction um, and, and going into this sort of entrepreneurial side of life. To be honest, I, I work full time, but on the flip side of that, you know, I'm grinding all the time um, in my time off just to try and make something else of myself and, and really push myself to be the best that I can be um, and, you know, have something of my own one day and be able to to really push that and and, and make a, a name for myself in that way. And where can they find you? Where can they find you? Uh, on Instagram, we are at Trident Flavours. Um, so you can find us there. We've got some new content coming real soon in 2024. And yeah, we got big things coming. So, so watch out for that. Yeah, I need that mm-hmm. discount little... Sample on that. <laughs> can, can you nice ship to Norway? Uh, you're gonna have to come over from Norway to try that. Norway, <laughs> soon, soon land, soon land. <laughs> it'll come to, it'll come to, uh, Patrick, it'll come to you frozen, bro. <laughs> <It's too cold. laughs> um, but yeah, how did the what what lessons did you learn in from football that transitioned very well in your entrepreneurship at the moment? Yeah. And what what's the one advice would you give to young kids in terms of like what have you done anything different um in terms of approach if you had to relive your life or anything like that? Um, in terms of the first side of things, in terms of what I've been able to develop and the skills that I've developed from football, I would say A. Well, not even A, B, and C. I would say my mentality in terms of my ability to overcome obstacles is a big one. Um, when I've been set back I've always found a way to bounce back and um, I didn't crumble and and you know let it overtake me I've been able to fight on and, and still do something that I want to do and um, I would say just that idea of being disciplined and being able to to have that hard work and put that extra out put them extra hours in that's something that I've always been able to do because of football I'd be going to school just like everybody else from 9 a.m till half three or whatever but then after that i'm going straight to training and i'm putting in extra hours whilst you know other people would go in and be able to play out with their mates and and i was able to sacrifice because of that so i've definitely been able to take that going forward um in terms of advice and for for other you know kids who would be going through a similar situation um i think if you really want to make something of yourself and you've got goals, you've got to want it. It's got to be you that wants it. It's got to be you that has that hunger inside because 
no one else is gonna wake you up early in the morning to to go on that run or to get that work done or to do that research or whatever it may be you've got to want it and i think that is the the big thing don't listen to what other people have to say um and if someone says that you can't do something take no notice because they don't know what you're capable of they don't know what you've got inside you when i told my agent that i was leaving nottingham he was saying to me what so you're just gonna stack stack shelves in a factory and it's like you don't know what i'm you don't know what i'm about you don't know me like that bro so yeah wait on me Ooh, 2024 Ooh, going to the moon why <laughs> starting flavor is global it's coming it's coming real thing yeah, i'm happy for you i'm happy you find another passion i'm happy that your your mental health is all good and i'm happy that um we've got like something to look forward in to work towards you because it's i know it's hard like it's so hard when football has been your uh, be or end all and it's yeah. all to an when they come out of it you feel so so lost i understand yeah. that and a lot of people like to get very lost but i'm glad they've got the support network and yeah run around just to kind of like get a degree and stuff like that not a lot of uh, pro bowlers and extra academy bowlers that go get a degree so uh, yeah in there. um we're all part of you keep it up thank you bro i appreciate that it's good to chat to you man and share my you know my story and my my my, my progression as well so i appreciate that for the, for the platform as well and for shouting me that was an episode if you want to see more check out this one